Good evening. I'm Pia Ontiveros. This is News.ph, but it's not politics as usual. There hasn't been a rock star pope in quite a while, so Pope Francis is most probably it, making telephone calls to people who never in their wildest dreams thought the Roman Catholic pontiff would dial their number, obliging young people who want to take a selfie with him in the frame, of course, and saying many things that would make the church nervous. And that is what we will talk about tonight. Our guests tonight, Father Francis Lucas, he's the executive secretary of the Episcopal Commission on Social Communications and Mass Media of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or CBCP, Professor Raymond Aguas of the Theology Department of the School of Humanities of the Ateneo de Manila University, uh, Leloy Claudio Professor, tama? a very young <laughs> <laughs> professor, tama? correct, no? Yeah. Political science, of course, Leloy, um, you always see him on the show or on town hall, <laughs> kapag uh, politika ang pinag-uusapan, but this is political also. And uh, joining us by telephone, although he's just been uh, discharged from the hospital after four days there, Dr. Mike As, he's also a theology professor uh, at the Ateneo. I just have to say that we asked Mike to join us tonight, and he agreed in spite of his hospital confinement because uh, he was with us during Solar's coverage of the conclave that elected uh, Pope Francis. So good evening to all our guests, Father Francis, Professor Aguas, Professor Leo. Ako, Ray, lang ako. Leloy. Ray, <laughs> Ray, Leloy, and Mike. Uh, Mike, are you there? Can Mike hear us already? Yeah, okay. All right, so let's begin with this. Reactions first from everyone to uh, Pope Francis's most recent statement. Uh, he was saying uh, that the church had grown obsessed, quote unquote, with abortion, gay marriage, and contraception. And the exact quote is, it is not necessary to talk about these issues all the time. The dogmatic and moral teachings of the church are not all equivalent. The church's pastoral ministry cannot be obsessed with transmission of a disjointed multitude of doctrines to be imposed insistently. We have to find a new balance, otherwise even the moral edifice of the church is likely to fall like a house of cards, losing the freshness and fragrance of the gospel. So Father Francis, let's begin with you. Well, as a, as a Catholic priest, I appreciate uh, his comments, mm -hmm. uh, but seen in a wider context. Mm -hmm of uh, focusing. Actually, there's nothing new with what uh, Pope is saying, mm -hmm. that uh, the pastoral should be also given an equal balance with the dogmatic or the doctrinal. Because, you know... Okay, translate that. What do okay, you mean? Okay, translate. <laughs> uh, as a pastor... They're talking you, to young people now, huh? yeah, okay. We're on social media. Hi, okay. people. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're probably you know, yes, talking tweeting. about you right now on social media. I'll just talk about things. my own experience as a priest. Yes. Uh, I was born in Manila, but I preferred to go to the missions to really feel the poor mm -hmm. because uh, I, was, I became a priest in the early 70s. Oh, that's mm -hmm. how old I am. Oh, so young. so okay. it's, it's, it's really, you have to really, Vatican II tells us you have to feel the church. Mm -hmm. So, and the Pope talks about this, think, quoting Ignatius. Mm -hmm. So I think he's correct, you know, that the nitty gritty of the different sins, uh, they're there. It's very common, and uh, the Pope accepted that the teaching of the Church, he abides by that because he's a good, uh, mm -hmm. good Catholic. Mm -hmm. So, but the point he was telling us is, we have to go beyond just the sins, like feeling the people, why, what's happening with them? Why is poverty so massive? What mm -hmm. is the causes, the real causes of these sins that are happening today? Yeah. And because uh, for him, the primacy of, uh, of a human person is a loving person, to be mm -hmm. loved and to love at the same time. Mm -hmm. So God is a, a magnanimous lover, an unconditional lover, yeah. that he looks at the person. The sins are there. Okay. And we have to protect them from committing yeah. more so sins. So compassion, not condemnation. Compassion, okay. not condemnation. Love against uh, condemnation, yeah. especially as a person. Yeah, but it's interesting, Father. You're saying we have to go beyond the sin. So you're saying abortion, gay marriage, contraception is a sin. Are yes, sins. yes, and he accepts that. As a gay sin. marriage and contraception are sins. That's what he says. He That's accepts what you're that. Yes. Okay, and you're also saying that, and you were quoted in an uh, earlier newspaper article misinterpreted. His statements were misinterpreted. Misinterpreted in the sense that every statement can have different perspectives. Yeah, and we'll hear that tonight. Yeah. Yes. Let's, let, let's uh, go down the line and let's see what uh, Professor Raymond Aguas says. Um, I love that statement of the church, uh, of the Pope, especially if it's prescriptive of the direction the church will be taking. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the analogy the Pope himself used, if you're a doctor or medic in a battlefield situation, they bring an injured person to you, seriously injured. You don't ask about his cholesterol. Right. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, th th those are the exact words of the Pope. It's an economic reality. We have unlimited wants and needs, but we have finite resources. The church has finite resources, whether that's money, personnel, mm -hmm. time in a homily. I have seven to ten minutes. Should I talk about these things all the time? Or should I be talking about hunger, people lack mm -hmm. access Injustice, to education, people poverty. lack access to health care? Yeah. Um, like my students often tell me, Ray, when will we have rallies called by the church to push for better health care? Mm -hmm. to push for better education. Because yeah. we will rally about something, let's say, like the RH bill. And I'm not saying that the church is wrong in that necessarily. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't we be pushing for more urgent needs? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. children dying. So, mm -hmm. if I may, a little more. Yeah. So, in, in the Gospel, in, in Matthew's Gospel, the only account of the Last Judgment, Father, as you know, yeah. is Matthew 25. The, the only questions Jesus asked would be, I was hungry, did you feed me? I was thirsty, mm -hmm. did you give me drink? Mm -hmm. He'll never ask about divorce. He'll never ask about yeah. masturbation. I'm not saying those are not important. Mm -hmm. But the but hunger, the, the sickness, things, yeah. th th that's the yeah. emphasis in the gospel. Yeah. If children are dying of hunger, why are we talking about contraception? Or, or, or divorce or gay yeah, marriage or, divorce, or whatever. Marriage. So, so I like the focus that Francis is putting on. I guess, more urgent issues. Mm -hmm. Well, do you agree, um, uh, Father Lucas was saying, it's mis he was misinterpreted? Um, you, it depends on your perspective, it depends on your city. If people say that he is now changing the church teaching on abortion or contraception, then that would be wrong because he has not made mm -hmm. the change. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly what he said and how he said it has come as a breath of fresh air yeah. to sounded, the more liberal of yeah. the Catholic. To me, it sounded almost revolutionary. Uh, I, I, again, I would not say revolutionary yeah. no? in the sense that he's not changing the church teaching, uh -huh. but he's saying, let's not talk about these things. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk okay. about the more important things. Yeah, okay. Uh, Leloy Muna, then we'll yeah. go back to Father. Actually, I'd like to operationalize Francis. that in the context of the Philippines because mm -hmm. I'm not a theologian, I'm not a Catholic either. So, like, what are the political implications of that? <laughs> Last year, there were two <laughs> major quarrels between the CBCP and President Aquino. One war was the is RH. an understatement. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> one, was a, one was a war, the other was a quarrel. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> so the war was the RH bill. Uh -huh. The quarrel was actually Hacienda Luisita. Yes. Actually, the church was squarely on the side of the farmers and agrarian reform in Hacienda Luisita. Now, if I were to apply this statement in reality, then maybe they would have come out stronger mm. for the farmers of Hacienda Luisita as opposed to saying things like, um, you know, the reason why we have natural disasters is because of the RH bill. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not changing the positions. It's a change of priorities. Okay, okay. Let's go first to Dr. Mike Assis. Then we'll go back to a uh, second round. Uh, Mike, uh, you're on the line? Yes, Pia. Yeah. yeah, okay. So tell us what your uh, reflections are, your reactions to that statement of uh, Pope Francis. Well, it certainly uh, lifts the burden of the church to stop obsessing with sexual matters and really focus on the more important things that uh, or, or values that the, that the gospel emphasizes, compassion, love, justice. Um, certainly, um, this will be good in the sense that um, the church now, it, well, well, for, for first, uh, I think more and more gays will come back to the church, mm. uh, and um, and the church will be associated now more with with loving compassion than harsh judgment. Yeah. You're saying, Mike, um, we can fill the churches again. I, you know, I mean, that, that's the reality here in the Philippines, no? Hindi mapuno-puno ang simbahan for Sunday Mass, for example. Well, actually, puno naman. <laughs> puno okay, naman. You know, I mean, we, we, at the 7 o'clock or the 8 o'clock mass, you never mind, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> May we remain to be an essentially pious people, uh -huh. but, but the challenge really is how we can translate our piety into, into works of mercy and justice and yeah. being sensitive to issues and concerns that really affect the lives of of people, especially the marginalized and the poor. My mm -hmm. Kanina, si Ray Aguas here, your colleague in the theology department in Ateneo. <coughs> yes, Ray, I was Ray. saying, and I paraphrase, correct me if I'm wrong, Ray, ha, na, uh, yung mga estudyante niya nagtatanong, you know, when are we going to rally about um, um, important 
more or as important things as uh, social, health, justice. social justice, healthcare, etc. Instead of like the church rallying against our age, for example. Is that also your uh, uh, experience? Ganun din ba yung mga sinasabi ng mga estudyante mo sa'yo? Well, the, well, the students do not, do not say much, at least in my class. <laughs> but, well, I think, that, uh, I think the challenge really of our challenge as, as teachers, as professors, is to, to, sh to shape them, you know, show them, show them the real, uh, the real issues that matter regarding their religion, mm -hmm. regarding their society. You know, we are teachers, we are educators. So, and, some, and sometimes it's our burden, really, to to show them the way as as it were, no? and I mean, um, and lead them to where they haven't gone before. <laughs> oh, okay. the final frontier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start. Right. Yeah. Sige, yeah. sige. Go ahead, Ray Agus. How, how do people identify typically today who is Catholic and who is not? We, we will identify it in terms of do you go to Mass on Sundays, do you fast or abstain during Lent? Yeah. Are you so we're pro talking about rituals, huh? The rituals or, or are you pro-life? Uh -huh. I mean, okay. globally, right? It's yeah. associated with being Catholic. You'll have lots of kids, you don't use yeah. condoms. So in other but words, that you're how... Catholic, you are Catholic if you are pro-life. Eh, paano kung Katoliko ka? Pero... De, parang ganun yung nangyayari, yeah. di ba? So, but is that how we should be defined? Shouldn't... Okay, you're Catholic because you care about social justice. Mm -hmm. You're Catholic because you love your neighbor. It's a perception issue, eh. and you know, identity-wise, we've we've isolated Catholicism with the rituals or the pro-life stance. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not saying the rituals are bad. I'm not saying the pro-life stance is bad, but should we not be identified with concrete love of neighbor, especially those most disadvantaged? Yeah, that's what Pope Francis is saying, right? Which is Let's why not I love limit it. the definition of being Catholic to. The rituals? Or in fact, I would say not just not limit, yeah. let's yeah. push it in this side. Yeah, push it in. Okay, uh, Father Francis, you were going, you yeah, wanted to I, say... Yeah, what I wanted to say was, in a sense, this is not revolutionary, mm -hmm. because Vatican II already was espousing this. Mm -hmm. uh, what I mean by this, that you have to look at the great mercy of God and, and all inclusiveness mm -hmm. and the pastoral approach to services, especially for the ministers. That's why uh, we have been talking about the Church of the Poor for 50 years. Yeah, it's so because, because, as I said, let's look at the bigger context of mm -hmm. uh, the problems of sin and mm -hmm. sinfulness. Mm -hmm. So it's all uh, interrelated. Mm -hmm. The not only but also. Mm -hmm. The sins is not only sexual sins all over. But when yeah. you start talking of life, that's why the Pope is talking about persons, about life, because that's very important for him. Mm -hmm. That you don't throw them if they're sinners and condemn them to hell. Mm -hmm. No, you have to, to walk with them, to be with them, being in the darkness with them without being uh, conquered by darkness. So mm -hmm. this is the words of the, the Pope. Mm -hmm. Nello, you want to react before we go to a break? Well, I think one thing that we should emphasize also is that this is coming from a Pope who's, who's coming from Latin America. Yeah. And so I think mm -hmm. it's grounded in those realities. The mm -hmm. reason why he can speak about poverty and say we should prioritize poverty is because he stared poverty in the eye. Mm -hmm. And this might not have been the experience of, say, a German Pope mm -hmm. or maybe a Polish Pope whose experience was really authoritarianism, mm -hmm. communist yeah. totalitarianism. Yeah, and, and that resonates, I guess, with the rest of the entire world yes. because there's so much poverty mm -hmm. around. No? Okay, we'll have to take a short break. News.ph will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching News.ph on the Solar News Channel. I'm Pio Ontiveros. Uh, we're talking about uh, the Pope's New Balance. He used the, word, the term New Balance no, in, in that uh, interview. And our guests are Father Francis Lucas, CBCP, uh, Professor Raymond Aguas of uh, the Ateneo's Theology Department, uh, Professor Leloy Claudio, also of the Ateneo, and Pana Atenista, no? <laughs> and <laughs> Dr. Mike Assis is on the phone, uh, also a professor uh, of the Theology Department at, in the Ateneo. You know, the reason why I was saying that, it sounded almost like revolutionary to me. I mean, me, a layman, a layman, you know, like many other people who are not theologians or theology professors or priests, you know, um, you, you could tell the, what the reaction was like on social media, you know, it was like, talagang biglang bumubos. It was an explosion. Father, I wonder if you, if you sensed that. Yes, that I people sense. People felt very I, strongly about yes, it. Yes, I, I sense this, uh, and it's quite strong. And as, as I said, uh, we like what the Pope is saying. Mm -hmm. And as an attitude, 
no? mm. of, of how to do it. Because usually what happens is, even Cardinal Tagle talks about this, mm -hmm. you don't just uh, be saved by doctrines, no. It has to be translated into, into the love of God. Because what are doctrines for? Yeah. There's no meaning if people don't see it. Uh -oh. so, but what, what do you think is the Pope's message to, I mean, if he, you know, if, if, if that was like also geared at uh, the, the church here in the Philippines, what do you think his message would be when it comes to, you know, we have issues like the reproductive health law, for example, which is still hanging in the balance. Yes, but he agrees with that. Mm -hmm. as, I, as I said, yeah. he has not changed any doctrine, mm -hmm. but how to balance and to merge doctrine and the pastoral. So actually, it's dogma and love. Uh, people are saying that mm -hmm. doctrine and the pastoral. So, mm -hmm. but they are not opposing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they are a paradox. No, you, it seems that they are they are different. No, they are not. They should mm -hmm. work as one, even if people don't see it that way. So it's not a contradiction. It's mm -hmm. a paradox. Mm -hmm. So, but we, uh, he also talks about tension, that all life is, uh, we all have tensions in our lives, and mm -hmm. you have to keep on searching God mm -hmm. uh, with, with the goodwill. So this is what the Pope is telling us. You have to walk with your people, you have to live with them, mm -hmm. but you have to look at the social sins because you don't, say, you, you don't get saved alone. So mm -hmm. the attitude of me better than you is not the way. It's not the way of Christ because mm -hmm. we remember he welcomes sinners. He said, if you have 100, one is lost, you have to run after that and mm -hmm. leave the 99 behind. Yeah. So this is very blatant, very clear yeah. that you really have to walk with your people, to live with them, to understand them, why, what's happening in the world today mm -hmm. in the bigger context and not just look at the nitty gritty of sins. Mm -hmm. Although you have to defend uh, the, your guidance towards morality. Mm -hmm. which is the teaching of the church. Mm -hmm. okay. We cannot do without that. Ray Leloy and Mike, uh, who's on the phone, um, your reactions to how people uh, reacted and interpreted this most recent statement of Pope Francis? Um, I think it's fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, people are like tweeting, you know, I'm going back to the church now. Because yeah. uh, mm -hmm. like, if I were divorced or if I were gay, I would not have felt welcome before. Eh? Mm -hmm. See, now at least, this is at least the beginning of the church being perceived as much more welcoming, much more Catholic in the sense of universal. No? Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's welcome and, and people are liking it. As you say rightly, yeah. he's a rock star. Yeah. That, so the church isn't, here in the Philippines isn't quite Catholic? Well, again, <laughs> understanding it in that sense of universal, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, certainly some people might feel marginalized. Mm -hmm. Okay, Leloy? Well, yeah. honestly, I'm still looking forward to the day when the church no longer has this position on reproductive health. I mean, there are mm -hmm. still so many deaths in Africa, so many maternal deaths here. And as an RH advocate, that's my primary, that's pr the primary thing I'm thinking about. Having said that, I think now after this, the church will be a lot more respectful as an interlocutor of mm -hmm. RH advocates. And I think that's a respect we can return because now that we are all in agreement that the priority is really things like poverty alleviation, then when we talk about RH, then we can talk on a more humane level. And so the yeah. mudslinging doesn't have to be the kind of mudslinging that yeah. you saw the last time. Oh, but with the way Father Francis is talking tonight, do you think that that is how the church here in the Philippines interprets what? Um, well, the thing is, the, the, the Pope's statements, it's a bit like, it's a Rorschach test. You see what you want to see there, uh -huh, right? Okay. There's enough vagueness for liberals to say, well, this is a, this is a coup for us. Yeah. And for conservatives to just go, well, you know, fundamentally nothing has changed. So, <laughs> okay. so and the, but that's the way the church church works, right? Yeah. Something comes from the Vatican, and then the, the community interprets it. Yeah. And so that's that's inherent to anything the church okay. does. But, but to give liberals like Leloy hope, uh, <laughs> you know, we used to have a that, and that's why you're seat, seated in the middle. Yes, oh, we okay. used to have a position on slavery. We mm. used to have positions on uh, charging interest rates and loans. Yeah. We used to say that the Earth was the center of the solar system, and we put Galileo under house arrest. Mm -hmm. um, we used to not like Darwin. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we burn some people at the stake too. No? Church positions have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe Leloy still has hope. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you feel still have hope? Anyway, Mike, <laughs> Mike Asis. Yeah. yeah, but it's always it's always good to have a it's always good to have a policy of uh, <clears throat> embrace unconditionally first, and then you ask the questions later. I mean, that is a very Christian approach, and that's how Christ approached people during his time. I mean, to, to approach people with unconditional love first. And no judgments, no? I mean, uh, that certainly was key to to conversion of so many people no? in the Gospels. No? You talk about the Zacchaeus, you, you talk about the, 
adulterous woman who was about to be condemned to death. Uh, in fact, Jesus really, um, I mean, in the face of sexual frailty, there was only compassion from Jesus. Um, because for, for, for Jesus, the greater sins really are hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, you know, th- those are the great, great, great sins of the gospel. Hypocrisy, indifference, apathy mm-hmm. to neighbor. The sexual mm-hmm. sins are important, yes, but uh, that did not preoccupy his, uh, his, moral, uh, his, his moral agenda. It is really about commitment, no? commitment to the kingdom values, no? values of love, compassion, brotherhood, fraternity, and so on, and equality. <clears throat> okay. Yes, Father. said, I think the priority of the Pope is to show God's love and mercy, which mm-hmm. is bigger than the sin. Mm-hmm. And uh, for example, uh, just an example of what he said, he introduced himself as a sinner. Yes. And when he got the gaze of God because of his mercy, his whole life has changed. And like Matthew, when he was gazed also by, by Christ, he wanted to hold on to that money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then he had to let go. So that is exactly what the Pope is saying. Let's bring God to the people. Let's explain mm-hmm. it. Let's be witnesses of it instead of just condemning people that you're a sinner. Mm-hmm. So in that way, it's inclusive. So again, you give value to the person, to his life. Mm-hmm. So all the other church teachings are, are uh, uh, a following of this tenet mm-hmm. of God's mercy, God's love, and how to, to uh, live a holy and pious life. But you cannot dictate on that. You cannot lecture that. Mm-hmm. You cannot lecture morality. You have to witness that and to explain. You have to be the example. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. And, oh. and you cannot push that. You mm-hmm. cannot push that to anybody. Mm-hmm. Because if, if they do not understand, that will happen. Yeah. Well, going to the people, I mean, isn't that what Pope Francis is doing? For example, no, he, um, in the last few weeks, uh, there have been photographs of him with young people, yeah, you know, taking selfies. You know, it's, it really went more than viral, I think, no? <laughs> And then the strangest thing, you have a Philippine bishop um, being quoted in the newspaper saying, oh, you know, young people, you should stop taking selfies. Alam mo, mag- ang daming nagagalit ng mga bata <laughs> sa ganon. <laughs> so, Father, di ba? Kumbaga, here you have Pope Francis talking about an inclusive church, you know, bringing people back into the church and, and people saying, I'm going back, di ba? Uh, uh, whether I'm divorced, whether I'm gay or whatever, di ba? I'm going back to church. I'm going to be attending Sunday Mass. And then here you, you have... You know, stop taking selfies. Bunny and Father, how do you explain that? Well, you know, uh, this no more the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. But remember, the selfie was not taken by the Pope himself. Yes, it but he, take, he no, gamely... No, I'm just, I'm just telling oh, you this. Yes, but but, what, but yeah. what the, I think what uh, uh, Bishop Bakani was saying is, let's not always look at ourselves because mm-hmm. love is not towards you. It's pointed towards others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's better to take others' pictures instead of just yourself. Yeah, so oh, I'm just but, trying to oh, interpret yes. what but you said, young, but you know. Yeah, but if you look at the photographs, because Father, eh, tingnan nyo, uh, these young people, I mean, syempre, hindi dito sa Pilipinas, no, sa abroad, uh, when they take a selfie, tuwan-tuwa sila kasi kasama nila si Pope Francis. Yes, that's right. Sinong pwede that's magyabang right, right. na miss selfie oh, ako kasama oh, si Pope Francis, oh, diba? Oh, oh. But what, what oh. he's saying is, there are a lot of selfie pictures na ikaw lang eh. Uh-huh. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm ano, just explaining. Yeah, siguro uh, lang, ewan ko, siguro lang mali lang ang timing niya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Something. Exactly. Okay, y- your, your reactions to that? Um, again, it's, especially in a religiously and a culturally plural world, mm-hmm. but this whole attitude will help bring people to the gospel. Eh? Meaning, mm-hmm. you can't convince a Muslim or a Buddhist about the creed. They will never mm-hmm. agree to it. Yeah. But you say there are refugees in Zamboanga, there are flood victims in Zambales, let's help them. Mm-hmm. That transcends religious boundaries. Eh? Parang, you're Buddhist, you're Muslim, you're Hindu, you will agree with me that we should help the refugees. Mm-hmm. If you really want to bring people to Jesus, the way to do it is precisely through actions like these eh, rather mm-hmm. than focusing on doctrinal matters so yeah. again going back to the let's be more catholic this seems to be the way this, this is be more catholic isn't that what mm-hmm. jesus would do wouldn't jesus also you know magpo-post din siya pag may magse selfie he w- wouldn't he be on twitter wouldn't mm-hmm. he be on facebook you know and wouldn't he wouldn't he care about the people? labels oh. eh. di ba parang they yes. say why are you talking to her she's samaritan yeah. and basically yes. jesus says i don't care whether she's yes, samaritan yes. or not mm. she's a human being yeah. and she should uh, be respected yeah. or in or in the context of twitter why, why are you retweeting her she only has two followers you know <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so it's basically a response to demographic mm. changes. I mean, we're seeing, if you look at the trends now in newspaper articles, it's all about what do the millennials want. So yes. the millennials are emerging as a generation with particular attitudes, with particular beliefs. And at least in the United States, most millennials are more liberal than Gen X mm -hmm. or the boomer generation. Yeah. So what's interesting here is not just that the Pope is flexible, but that he's flexible in a way that's responsive to actual demographic shifts yeah. globally. Right. Right. Oh, so he's reaching out to the millennials yeah. because th this is the, the the church of the future. Mm -hmm. If he loses them, or the pan na. So nagtatanim, nag invest. Oh. This is a massive. So that that selfie it might seem innocuous. It's actually a massive investment on the image of the the church for this generation oh. that is going to be the flock of the church. Ang, ang I'll quibble a bit with Delo, you okay. know? Uh, I don't think it's just a reaction. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not new. It's mm -hmm. going back to the original source, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning, this is the way Jesus was. Yes. So, okay. it's not something we've discovered brand new. It's something we're trying to rediscover, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to Mike Assis. Uh, he's on the phone. Mike. Pia. Yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. I mean, regarding okay, the selfie, I think ko. Okay. Okay. Yung ano? Okay. Yung groupy, but not selfie. <laughs> Basta group picture, okay siguro. <laughs> but anyway, on a, on a more serious note, um, well, you know, the name of the Pope, no, Francis, no, it's, it's not just a name, no, it's really a, it's really a vision no, for the church. It's really a, a pastoral strategy. It's really an agenda for the, for the future. It's about, you know, I mean, and we know Francis of Assisi, you know, from, from which the Pope uh, took the name. It's really to be a man of the poor and and who are the poor they are the the unpretentious in society there they precisely disarm people because they have nothing to be proud of they nothing to brag about uh so 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 i think for 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 francis the the way for the church the way for church renewal and to reinvigorate this church is the, the, the is is through the way of the poor Okay, and 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 by his actions and gestures, uh, we we have seen that that he has disarmed people you now with with the, with the simplicity of the of the gospel message. You know, there is nothing really revolutionary about um, about the message. It is really the way he carries the message. That is, I think that is what what people have noticed. You no, know, which 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 was not. Probably um, done by previous uh, shepherds of the church. Mm -hmm. So, so it's really um, it's really the way for the church to to become more um, more um, in solidarity mm -hmm. and uh, in solidarity with with experiences of, of of ordinary people. Okay, we have a a minute to go, so we'll take final words. Uh, I think you have like each 15 seconds. So let's begin with uh, Mike Assis. Mike? Okay, you know, you know, you last 15 seconds. <laughs> it's not because. Ako na mapuputo yan kay Father Francis. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you, Mike. Father yeah. Francis? Uh, what I'd like to say about the Philippine churches, which I've been a priest for, what, almost 40 years, mm -hmm. that uh, we often do not see the priests, the ministers, all over the rural areas. They live very poor lives. They stick out their necks. Some of them have been murdered and killed for standing by the poor, by mm. being with their people. And the people love them, like the farmers and the fisher folk and the women. Mm. So, and the IPs. And they have defended what Christ uh, was, uh, stood for. Mm. So mm. I, we, we often forget this because many people live in the cities. The media is always here in the centers. Mm. But nobody minds the, the thousands of priests languishing in the, in the, the rural, rural areas. areas. So this is the real face of the Catholic Church in the Philippines. Like mm. the Philippines is not just Manila or Quezon City or Cebu or yes. whatever. But yes. these often are not put in the, in the center of, uh, of uh, discussions. Mm -hmm. So we have a very vibrant church. And uh, the last TBCP statement uh, last uh, January did not only look at RH Bill. Mm -hmm. It analyzed the whole gamut of what's wrong with our country, with our faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, is telling us to be forgiving and merciful mm -hmm. and to be militant in yeah. the defending the poor. So maybe it's up to the church to put these priests <laughs> in the forefront. Huh? Uh, Ray Aguas? The Pope seems to recognize the truth as a liberal bias, eh, which mm -hmm. I like. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, medyo safe pa yun. So, tigil na pa doon. 
No, don't don't go for C. Leloy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Last year, I was involved in two struggles. One, the RH Bill struggle. The other mm -hmm. was agrarian reform struggle. Sa isa mm -hmm. kaaway namin yung sa sim simbahan, sa isa kakampi namin. Mm -hmm. Ang gusto ko lang sabihin, it's a lot better to have the church as your ally rather than your enemy. And I'm looking forward to that. Okay, thank you very much to our guests tonight. Father Francis Lucas, thank you. Uh, Ray Aguas, Professor Ateneo de Manila, thank you very much. And Deloy Claudio, thank you so much. And Dr. Mike Asis, who joined us by telephone. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I'm Pio Antiveros. This is News.ph. See you again next Wednesday. Good night. <laughs>